among the early Senecas living on the Cattaraugus Indian Reservation and also living throughout the uh, areas west of the reservation. Whenever a gathering would occur, these gatherings were called councils. There were many councils. In the teaching lodges, there would be councils. There would be councils for children. There would be councils for men and councils for women. The government was run as a council. The meaning of council was the gathering of minds, talents, and abilities of the people who came together to share in whatever the council was set up to represent. We'll talk first about the Council of the We People. At this particular council, all the relatives of the children, brothers, sisters, aunts, uncles, mothers, fathers, would convene to help the children into their first experience of meeting in council. The purpose of the Council of the We People was to introduce the children to the social structure of the Senecas. There were councils, of course, of other nations, but in this particular case, we we're talking about the Senecas. This council was set up to help the children learn the importance of listening. Also, the importance of making promises and that these promises were very, very much a part of Native American life. In this particular council, children would come if they were ready to make promises. They knew what a promise was. They knew that when they came to this particular council, there would be certain promises that they would make. And when this promise was made, it would reflect just what kind of a person these young people wanted to be. It's an interesting fact among the Senecas that the children made their own decision when it was time for them to come to the council. Of course, it was like the first day of school today when the council of the we people would convene. And there was a certain amount of excitement because it was the children's time when all people would focus their eyes upon these youngsters. The parents would not prepare the children in any way except to say that when they did enter into the council ring, they would be expected to sit quietly and to listen to whoever was speaking. Let's make believe that we are part of this council. Perhaps it would be the best way to understand just what happened. As the council ring was complete, 
the children would sit with their parents. So this would indicate they would perhaps be sitting in their own clan section. As the elder would rise, the children would rise. The rest would remain seated. The elder would ask each one if they were happy. And the children would, would respond either that they were or that they weren't. If a youngster was there who appeared to be nervous, this would indicate that the child might not be ready to enter into this particular phase of their lives. And the elder would ask, would you like to leave? and the child would respond one way or the other. If the child indicated they wanted to leave, they left at that particular time. However, the rest of the family remained. At no time after that did anyone ask the child, well, why did you leave? because they honored the wishes of this child. The others who remained re were ready to participate in whatever the council presented to them. Each child would ask individually if they were ready to take on some kind of work. At this council there would be four places indicated that they would visit. The kind of work would be demonstrated to them as they would move from one project to the next. They were told not to select any one particular job or work until they had finished visiting every site. For example, one site would always have various kinds of baskets, different designs, different sizes, so that the youngsters, when they would select ba their baskets, would represent something in their personality that would blend with the choice they had made. Another kind of work would be that of sorting things into categories. There would only be four different categories. These things might be items that could be used for decorating the regalia. These items would be placed in specific spaces or they would be placed in baskets. But these baskets would be not of anyone's choice other than the place to put these various items. Another job would be collecting herbs of different kinds, which meant that the children would be with a particular person and going out and learning about what was in the outer woods, so to speak. The fourth category would be as a messenger or to take items from one place and pick up an item from that place and take it to another. For example, a person might have splints and they would take it to the people who were making baskets 
and then they would take the finished baskets to someone else for storage. As the children were introduced to each project, they would decide which one that they liked the best. And when it came time to select the job, they would indicate what they wanted and what they would like to do. This made the children feel that this, the job selected was one of real choice and one that they liked the best and one that they felt that they could do their best work. They would work with this project and everyone worked. This would be carried on from the morning until noon when the sun was overhead. At that time, the children would gather before their elders and they would listen to some stories before they would have free time the rest of the day. Perhaps at some times, a child would not want to do the work and they would not appear at the designated place and everyone knew that the child was going to experience a lesson. At this time, no one paid any attention to them as they roamed around the village. Everyone was working. So in the child became invisible, we might say. Everyone knew that the child was going to be ignored. When it came time to eat, the child was not fed. And even when it came time to go to bed at night, the doors were not open to the child. Well, it is well understood that the next day the child would appear at the job they were expected to do. No one said anything to them but the child knew that they had to use self-discipline to keep up the work that they had promised to do. After all, when they were asked which job they preferred and they selected that job, this was a promise. And they made this promise in the eyes of all others who watched. As time went on, by the time the child was five years old, they had progressed from one work project to another and had learned many things. At age seven, among our people, a child had learned to be a part of the society, a major part of the society, in fact, and the work that they did was respected and self-esteem was the reward for doing work and doing it well. At age seven, the child entered into another council. This council permitted them to select which teaching lodge they wanted to attend. And since there were eight teaching lodges, the youngster had an opportunity to choose which particular teaching lodge they expected to spend some time. At these lodges, there would be four students and one teacher. This represents the hand of friendship. The four making a complete balance, also meaning life, unity, equality for eternity. And the philosophy then began to, to come forth in a very pleasant way. The thumb represented the teacher, or in a wider sense, the creator. When the children would 
would enter these lodges. They would talk as I am doing this and I am doing that, but not for very long because it would became a we type of project. Four different people under one teacher. They would go out and whatever the project would be or whatever the lesson would be, it would be we are doing this. And when this happened, the we are made them become one. And this is the greatest philosophy that the Senecas projected, the oneness of all things, that all are equal, and there's the unity, the, the fact that this goes on forever, and that we are only a small part doing our portion of what needs to be done. These children would move from one teaching lodge to another where they would learn many lessons. They would even, if they did not start at their own lodge in which they belonged, the own, their own clan, they would move to all the other clans and even visit their own clan again. And when this had been co completed, they would enter their vision quest which would indicate that it was time for them to graduate, we might say, into being a beginning of a new life. This was, in essence, what the Council of the We People and the Younger People was about. Other councils followed that of the Council of Men and the Council of Women. There was also councils of the elders, which was a very sacred kind of council in which they were over the overseers of all the other councils. Those elders were the teachers and were held in high esteem by all the people of each Indian village. The Council of Men meant the same as the Council of the We People, except that the, the men came together with all their gifts and abilities, and they recognized that they were indeed men regardless of what kind of a, a profession, so to speak, they followed, those of being warriors or, or uh, hunters or craftspeople. And in the Council of Men, they were the examples of the younger people, the parents, the fathers, the uncles, the older brothers. It was at this council that the men learned about their intuitive gift and how their intuitive gift helped them walk in harmony within their surroundings. They learned at this council about a certain characteristic that men possess. This characteristic is that men are often impatient, and because of this impatience, they move very fast. And sometimes, if this movement, this fast movement, and this very uh, uncomfortable feeling of impatience pushes them into areas that create discomfort. For example, if a man is impatient because someone is not moving as fast as he is, he will become irritable, 
and might even say things that would hurt other people. This feeling is not one of joy. It makes people do things that are not complementary to their image. We say that a man walks his pathway of peace in which he is using his gifts and his abilities to help him become a whole person. When he walks this pathway, at any time he may be confronted with impatience. The moment he is confronted with this feeling, he stops for a moment. And at this moment, his intuition takes over. He then makes a decision whether he should focus his impatience in a positive direction or follow the negative. When he follows the positive direction, his impatience is guided by his intuitive gift and he understands why he is impatient and he seeks the reason and gives a proper direction for positive growth. When he continues on this path of intuitively guiding his impatience, it forms a circle and his lessons are all positive and the circle comes back to the beginning place and his awareness has been enriched and he can start out on another path of learning. However, when his impatience has been ignored and he does not focus upon balancing this intuitive sense with that of the impatience, he becomes irritable. He hurts people. He often becomes physical. And he follows this path of developing a characteristic and also qualities in his character that are unfocused. And he becomes out of control. He'll walk this circle, this negative circle, and come back to the beginning just as the other direction. And at this time, he may realize the folly of what impatience has, de has caused in his life and can begin anew and have another chance, so to speak. But if not, this characteristic becomes part of his nature and he is not a very happy person nor is he one that anyone wants to be uh, connected with in any way. When these men get together, they talk as brothers, fathers, sons, all as one extensions of each other and the unity of their spirit. It's a wonderful, wonderful experience for these men to know that others think as they do and that they have lacks and limitations that need to be guided and that they can help each other whenever necessary. Each person is developing the image they want to be. But if impatience mars this image, there's always others who can help, who can be good examples at the time that the, that the man during his impatience can see that there is another direction that he can take and then he can focus upon this direction only through his intuitive gift 
and the more he uses his intuitive gift, the more he develops into the person he wants to be. At the Council of the Men, they also learn about their role in connection with others, their children, their brothers and sisters, their wives, and also learn how they can adjust or adapt in a pleasant way to becoming a whole person. In like manner, the Council of Women bring their gifts and their abilities. They carry all these things within their hearts and they gather as women. At these councils, children, female children from seven up, attend because it's important that these young people have role models to follow. This also is true of the men seven up. When these women gather, they learn about suspicion, which is the door to intuition. When a woman becomes suspicious of something, she also knows at that point that her intuitive gift has, has made itself uh, present. At that time, she can focus her suspicion in a positive direction and learn through this suspicion that she can grow and direct her energies into that which she wants to be. If she ignores this intuitive gift. She can spin off unthinkingly into the wrong direction and become the kind of person that no one wants to be with because it is, a, it is an avenue of, of fear that she is then beginning to travel. And the suspicion can become almost like a disease and it destroys not only the person who is suffering of a suspicious nature, it can also destroy those around her. And people do not want to be with a suspicious person. They feel uncomfortable in the presence of this very strange feeling. The expression is mirrored on the person's face and also in their actions. The Council of Women, like the Council of Men, help each other to grow into a positive direction. Great, a great deal of time is spent on defining what, dis, what suspicion is and how it can be directed at the point where it is first felt. Suspicion is not as energetic, so to speak, as impatience, but it can be very uh, destroying because it is not so well Seen. A suspicious person can sort of slink behind others and hide, whereas impatience is, is right out there. It, it is seen immediately. The, the body reflects these two characteristics. Women as well as men have impatience and suspicion. In the men, the impatience is stronger, whereas in the women, the suspicion is stronger. A person who is impatient can also develop 
suspicious attitudes. Likewise, a person who is suspicious can develop impatient attitudes. It's, an, it's the attitude that can be changed, and we change these attitudes through our intuitive gift. This is what the councils are all about, to help people develop into what they want to be, to help them see characteristics and qualities that can be erased and given a person a chance to develop fine qualities in character. The elders would meet in council as overseers. Many could help to be present in both councils. In fact, in all the councils, the elders were always there as the teachers. And for this reason, they were respected. Everyone wanted to reach this, the, the time when they could be considered as being an elder. The interesting thing is that an elder would not say, I am an elder of a particular council, because this was not part of their role. They would only be asked by the, the council members to be present. It was then an honor. So what we're saying is that there was not labeling as much as the labeling that we encounter in this present-day society. In speaking of impatience and suspicion, these words might seem difficult to the people of today because of their very negative identification. It is important to take a negative word or a negative feeling and to direct it into a positive state so that it becomes both negative and positive and creates a balance. And when this balance is created, we indeed find that negative people are people who suffer fears. And oftentimes, because of these fears, they develop a big ego, and we call them carrying big heads. And those heads become very, very heavy. Also, people who have the tendency of being impatient and suspicious often have shadows that they have developed, and these shadows follow them around, and they, they become fearful, frightened. So we say, become acquainted with the shadows that we have made, and make them our friends. Each council among our people were councils in which friends came to meet. Danijo, Yahweh Sonil.